All right, for this next problem, we're going to need a new tool in the MATLAB tool set. So uh, that tool is a built-in function in MATLAB. And we'll just go through a few real quick and introduce you to them. If I go over to MATLAB, MATLAB has built-in functions for the use of mathematical operations. And the ones we're going to need here are the trigonometric identities. So you have sine, cosine, and tangent in math, right? The way we can use these in MATLAB is sine, and then use the parentheses because it's a function, cos for cosine, and tan for tangent. And as you can see, it says tan of x, input angle in radians. So each of these will take the angle in radians. And we'll go ahead and use those to solve our next problem. All right, so for the next problem we're gonna solve with MATLAB, we'll look at standard physics problem. Let's say there is a cube sitting on a slanted surface at rest. Using the free body diagram below, determine the forces N and F given weights of one gram, two gram, five gram, 10 gram, 100 gram, 200 gram, and 1,000 grams. And you can assume gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. All right, so let's approach solving this just like we were solving on piece of paper, the standard physics class. So first of all, assign it some axes, X and Y. And I'll look at some of the forces in X. And because it's stationary, that's got to equal zero. And the sum of the forces in X, are, uh, that's going to be F cosine of 30 degrees minus N sine of 30 degrees and some of the forces in y also equal to zero and here i have f sine of 30 degrees plus n cosine of 30 degrees minus M G. So solve for N and F, I can say F is N sine of 30 over cosine of 30. And when I plug that into here, I can say uh, N sine squared of 30 plus or divided by cosine of 30 plus N cosine of 30. equals m g and so n equals to m g over sine squared of 30 divided by cosine 30 plus cosine of 30. And then I can plug this back in. F is this times sine of 30 over cosine of 30. So I was able to solve this by hand. Now, how do I, what, what is the utility of MATLAB here? 
well, I can let it perform the calculations for me. So where I have a bunch of masses to look at, I can see, okay, plug that in. G is a constant. It's just going to be one value. M is a set of values. And then this down here is a constant. Fill this in. And this is a constant. So I can just go to MATLAB and I can solve it like this. Put a comment here. Okay, so now I have n is m times g. If I pull this up. M times G divided by sine of 30 squared divided by cosine of 30. Plus cosine of 30. And then F is that N times sine of 30 divided by cosine of 30. So there's a few things with this. First, I'm going to need to define what M and G are, right? So first, the first M we have is one gram. So if I make a note here, grams and uh, G is negative 9.81 again. This is meters per second per second. So this M times G, we already know we'll need to divide this by a thousand to get kilograms, right? If we want the final forces to be in Newtons, let's just assume we do. So this will be Newtons and this will be Newtons. And I'll just suppress the M and G because I already know what those are. I don't need to calculate those but the N and F I care about, so I'll leave those unsuppressed, not include the semicolon. But if I go right here and I have my M times G divided by sine of 30 squared, so I have to do, MATLAB won't understand sine squared of 30. It just has this function, sine of 30, and then I want all of that squared in using the caret. And then I divide that sine of 30 squared. And if you look where it underscores, where I'm moving my cursor, how it's underscoring the parentheses. So those parentheses are matching. So this is the same open parentheses as the closed parentheses that's underscored there. So that just helps you keep track of how many parentheses you're in at that point in time. So I'll do divide by cosine of 30, and I forgot to close that parentheses, plus cosine of 30. And looks like that will match, because using order of operations, I'll do the square, then I'll do divide, then I'll add, right? Which is how we want it to do it. And then I'll have to use parentheses to divide by all of that. And Right here, uh, there's one more thing I need to remember, and that's these functions took in radians, not degrees. So right now I'm filling in degrees. So what I'll do here is I'll say angle equals 30, and I'll multiply it by pi, 3.14, 1.5, and divide it by 180 because that's the conversion from angles to radians. So instead of 30 here, I can just do angle. 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 Okay. So now if I run this, I'll get the N and F in Newtons for this problem. So that's the first M, one gram, you know, here as well, radians. 
So that's how I was able to do the first mass right here. Uh, in order to do the second, I can copy this, do it again, right? And do two grams. And now I have the N initially and then an F here. So that works, but that's a little bit unnecessary. So the way we can simplify this, right, is we can do, we can use a matrix, because we're using the matrix laboratory, to store all the masses, 1, 2, 5, 10, 100, 200, and 1,000. Divide each of those by 1,000. So here we have all the masses. And now if we run this, we'll have a matrix or a row vector for N and F giving the forces acting on the cube, the normal and friction forces at the 30 degrees. And we have it, this is for the first mass. So this is for a mass of one gram. This is for a mass of two grams, five grams, 10 grams, 100, 200, 1,000. So that's a reason we would use a matrix when we have a bunch of values. And if we think about it, uh, if we had, for example, a set of angles, so let's say I had 30, 30, 30, 30, uh, so I wanted a mass of 30, or a mass of one gram, angle of 30 degrees, mass of two grams, angle of 30 degrees, mass of five grams, angle of 30 degrees, mass of 10 grams, angle of 30 degrees, but then the 100, 200, and 1,000, I want 45 degrees. I can store the angle in the matrix, and now my angle and my mass are, are matrices, and I'll have to do a dot multiply because I just want to multiply this by its specific value in the angle. So I'll swap all of my normal multiplication, which works fine with scalars and matrix with scalars. But if I want to multiply matrices together, then I need to do dot multiply. So I'll just change all of these multiplications. And now I'll run this. Oh, we'll also need dot exponent. And there we go. Now I was able to change the angles corresponding with those masses and get out forces again. That's what the main utility of matrices are. You still have to think how you're solving the physics problem. You can't just use MATLAB and tell it mass forces angle and it knows the equations. You need to know the equations. But once you generate the equations for yourself, you can use MATLAB and it can perform many, if I, if I had many more masses, like if I wanted thousand masses, and let's just go back to 30, degrees here, I can in a second just swap that from 1 to 1,000. So remember this will show this. It will just be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in steps of 1 all the way to 1,000. So I'll have 1,000 columns. And I can just use this and it instantly pops out all of these forces. So that's a huge utility that MATLAB can be helpful with.